<clears throat> Welcome to Dean Village. We love these little places in Edinburgh because it's almost like a time capsule and you're going to see that when we take you in. Now a lot of people who come to Edinburgh don't visit Dean Village and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is we like to keep it really secret for ourselves to be honest. Another is you can't get any coaches or buses down here. So if you're on a coach tour you will never come down here but you will go over the bridge up above us. That's the Dean Bridge. Now have a look at some of the architecture here. We're looking at this little building here. It looks like a little castle. It's the style of Scots baronial. Look at the tower here. You'll see that a lot. Um, this was um, from the 1800s. We call it the Scots baronial. And you can see it's all castellated. Well, this actually was a mill itself. So a lot of the mills that were working here have been repurposed. And this is now a high-tech office for a software company uh, are based in here. Let's walk along a little bit further. Now Mike mentioned that uh, Dean Village itself is mentioned uh, back in the 12th century, 1100s. The reason being, um, the canons, we've already talked about the canons of Holyrood Abbey. And the canons, they were gifted the mills here by King David back in the, in the 12th century, so 1100s. And they were flour mills. Dean Village used to produce all of the flour for the city of Edinburgh itself. Now before the huge bridge up here was built, this was the main thoroughfare. All the traffic would come through here. It was heavily industrialised. It was a busy place. And I'm going to take you into some of the little secret places that you would never get into, but we'll show you how they repurposed. If you look at the building here, again, great way of how they've turned the old mills into absolutely stunning accommodation here. I mean, it's a great place to have your house. There were lots of different types of mills. So we had flour mills, they had paper mills, they had snuff mills for the gentlemen of the 17, 1800s who would take their snuff. It was usually gentlemen in those days, so a few ladies would take it too. Um, they also had a tannery, they had a skinnery where they would skin animals here, so they would hang animals here, and butcher, butcheries. But what I want to do is take into some of the old sort of relics of the industrial past here. Because this old mill here, we've still got the stones that were left to Griston Mills. Now, Mike has said the mills were here because of the power of the water. So this was actually the powerhouse of the, the industrial age before steam was invented or created, or well, the steam power. Thanks to another Scotsman, James Watt. Yeah, we'll take that too. So here we've got some of the millstones here. Apparently these are derived from, uh, they're coming from France. And this is what's left of Lindsay's Mill. Lindsay's Mill was here. I went down to the water. So you try, have to try and get an idea as to what the population was like here. This place was buzzing. Although today we walk through it and it's very peaceful and very tranquil. And I think now we can get a good view of the Dean Bridge or the Telford Bridge and see how high it is. If we're lucky, we might even see a bus go over it. Just when you want a bus, then it comes along. There's a bus, there you go, on cue. So you can see how high the bridge is. And also up to the left, you'll see the church. So you can get the impression we are in a deep gully here. So let's move on and go into the village proper. As I mentioned, uh, this was one of the few places we could actually cross the river here. And so the traffic here would have been phenomenal. It's really steep to get up and down here. So the carriages and the horses and the horses' hooves and the, and the carriages had metal uh, on their wheels as well. So the noise must have been phenomenal. Today, incredibly peaceful. We've got some high-tech offices here. Again, another old mill being converted into high-tech offices. So some of the buildings here do date back to the 1600s, and I'm going to show you some of them. And they are still lived in today. So although the buildings, some of the buildings in the city itself, or in this part of the city, have been re repurposed, they, have they were built to last. You have buildings here going back 1600, 1700, 1800. And we're going to show you one of the mills that's got wonderful apartments in it as well. 
spells Bree. Bree is a Scottish word for a hill. B-R-A-E. The little road we're on at the moment gets its name. It's called Miller Row. The reason being, there were so many mills here. Now, Bell's Bray gets its name because if you look up in this yellowish building here at the top, you will see the bell. Let me take you up to the street just for a minute. Because this building here dates back to the 1600s. This is what the Edinburgh tenements originally looked like. And you'll see, as you come up here, that it's a very steep hill here. So coming to Dean Village for a walk is not for the faint-hearted as well. It's a really good workout. I always say, we have this thing, a phenomenon in Edinburgh. All the hills go up. None of them seem to come down again. But after about three weeks in Edinburgh, your tush will be two inches higher than it was before you arrived. But if we just come over here, I'll show you the date on the house here. 1675 and these are still desirable residences it's just a picture postcard it's history it's alive it's great we live in a historic city we love showing it to you and we love it here because it's quite a secret little place we don't want anybody to know so don't tell anybody we told you let's keep it amongst ourselves so let's walk down into the village we're coming down Bell's Bray have a look at the architecture Again, off this older, older house here. Look at the lovely flowers outside it. Now, a lot of the mills were owned by guilds. So they were actually owned by the people rather than businesses. And the mills, the guild called themselves the Baxters. Baxter is a Scottish word for baker. And if you look on the wall here, you get a picture of Bell's Bray. Lovely ochre building there and the half windows. If you recall when we were on the high street on the Royal Mile, you'd have seen some of these buildings on the Royal Mile as well. Now, Dean Village was for a long time independent, not part of Edinburgh at all, but supplied Edinburgh with all of its goods. Now, if we look on the wall here, you see what looks like tennis rackets with balls on it. Well, that's actually the paddle that the bakers would use. And now you're looking at lumps of dough and they put the dough into the ovens. And this is where part of the mill here was creating the flour for the bakers. On this side of the bridge that we're going over here, this was the main thoroughfare. This was the main bridge for all of the traffic. This place was a money-making place. But have a look at this building here, the old mill converted into beautiful apartments and then you get a good view of the church in the distance and imagine yourself I mean I would like to live here but the one thing I would get here is like if you go to bed at night and you leave your window open I think I'd be running to the toilet all the time to be frank but it is lovely and it's so fresh the air is so clean now you have to imagine in, in the industrial day it had been filthy and probably quite polluted And you can see the medallion on the wall, Edinburgh School Board, 1875. They have a picture there of Queen Margaret. Um, queen Margaret was the queen, again, back in the 1100s. And uh, when she died, her body was transported from Edinburgh up to Dunfermline. And uh, it's said here that she, they passed here. And uh, so they have St. Margaret and also with the kids there. So importance of teaching, particularly in the Victorian period. Talking to the Victorians, um, a lot of the Victorians uh, were philanthropic and there was one particular man who was the proprietor of the Scotsman newspaper and he provided what you would call social housing. Because of all the mills here, they wanted, to, they, they wanted the workers close to the work. They gave them the education here, so they had them all at school and they provided them accommodation. And I'm going to take you into this eclectic little bit collection of buildings here. And it's like something out of, I always think it looks like something out of medieval France. In fact, these buildings were built in the 1800s. 
let's go inside and have a little look. And I mentioned it was built by a newspaper magnate. And his name was John Ritchie Finlay. So if you come in here, see how picturesque it is. Now from in here, the style here is known as the arts and crafts style. So quite different from the Georgian style in the new town. And the arts and crafts was very popular in the Victorian period. They also built, not only built the housing for the workers here, it's all social housing, but they also provide a meeting hall. Now there were strict, strict regulations. Um, you you were, had to be back at home by a certain time. You were not allowed to come in drunk. And you had to abide by certain rules here. But there's a family accommodation, very good, and still very, very desirable place to live at the moment. And here we have the classic Scottish drying green out there. You know that expression, hanging out your dirty laundry? Well, this is all clean laundry here. So this is a stairwell going up into the buildings here. Very peaceful, no traffic. People who really look after their apartments here. It's okay. To be a film star. <laughs> You're going to be a film star. <laughs> So this is well court, beautiful. And the sun, if you look over this side here, I can give you some of the styles. So it's an eclectic mix of architecture. So you've got the open stairwells, you can see the wrought iron the detail, but you can also see the little steps here on the roof, very, very Scottish. We call that crow step gables. Because you can imagine little crows bouncing down there. And we've got the clock tower here which was actually the meeting place for the, for the tenants here, next door to the school. Have a look at just the architecture in general. It is just simply gorgeous. I'd also be walking along, I'd like to speak to a bit about another of our fans. I've mentioned her before, her name is Fern. Hi Fern, she gets up really early in the morning. We'll just walk her as we talk. She gets up really early in the morning. She lives in Arizona. Now Fern was with me uh, last year on a tour of Scotland. She was with her church group um, led by Pastor Hines, so it was a Lutheran church group and we were traveling around Scotland. However, on the first day that we arrived, Fern had a bit of an accident. She had a blackout and she fell and she hit her head on the sidewalk on the pavement and she was hospitalized. Now, Fern was 94 years old at the time. So she was hospitalised. We had to leave her in the hospital. She was getting good care, although according to Fern, she wasn't. She will never eat carrot soup again, apparently. Um, but she was phoning up, asking to get sprung. And I was saying, you're in a hospital, not a prison. She thought it was a prison. She wanted to get sprung. So after three days, she actually discharged herself. Now we had already left to go up to the Highlands. Fern, not to be held back, goes back to the hotel where we were in, picks up our bags, gets in a taxi and comes and joins us, joined us again. She was there with her sister-in-law, Elaine. Hi Elaine, hope you're watching as well. Elaine was 91, so we've got the 94 and 91 year old trooping around Scotland. So she got the taxi and she came and joined us and it was a very, very happy taxi driver, I can tell you. <laughs> it was a, I don't think he had to work for the rest of the week uh, for the fair leg. I mean, we were miles up north. So, Fern actually plays the organ in the church every Sunday. So I said I'll give her a little shout out. And uh, so now she's 95 and she is an inspiration for a lot of people. She's an inspiration for me that at that age, she is still getting up and going and getting out there. So there's a little story of Fern, one of our regular fans. Take care. Now I want Mike to take a little view over here. We can see over the river. And again, have a look at the architecture. This is what Edinburgh is famous for. This is what we call an eclectic mix. Now some of these buildings, the yellow ones are old buildings, but behind them, the white buildings, these are actually quite modern buildings, but everything is built compassionately to fit in with the environment. I don't know if Mike can pick up the water itself here, but the water, it looks like weak coffee. It's so brown. This is because of the peatiness. Now this river used to be really polluted but Mike showed you the statue of the otter. Hope, otter. Hopefully you can make it out in the water. 
The water is so clean now. Hey. Hey. So the water is so clean now. Uh, you get trout coming up here. You get other little uh, birds, dippers particularly, who go in and catch the insects under the water. We have the otters in here. So everything is really, really clean. And sometimes the city kids, when it gets warm during the summertime, you get the city kids will be in here for a little paddle. You can walk the whole length of the river or cycle it if you choose. But we get an impression of the architecture here and the lovely, lovely little displays of the flowers in the tubs outside here. Now the village itself, as I mentioned, was highly industrial. They also had a distillery here. They had a brewery as well, but they also had a chemical dye works. There was no such thing as unemployment in those days until steam comes along, then everything moved. And then when they built the bridge above the village, no traffic was coming through here. So even in the 1800s, when they built the bridge, the village started to decline. And it did decline terribly. And a lot of the accommodation was unsanitary, uninhabitable. And in the 1970s, Mike mentioned there was an explosion in one of the, the mills here. And that was the last mill. And that was the final nail in the coffin for the, for the milling in this town or village. However, Edinburgh being Edinburgh, they decided to rebuild, repurpose, and reuse the buildings, bring them up to sanitary level. Indoor toilets were provided in all of the, the buildings. And now this village is quite possibly one of the most expensive areas in the city to buy an apartment or even to rent. Now I want to take you over here. Um, when we were in the little courtyard there, we showed you Well Court. I want you to have a look at it from the other side of the river here. And what I'll ask Mike to do is we'll go off even more off the beaten track. We told you we'd like to take you to little secret places and this is going to be a little treat for you. Let's go inside. Hopefully the signal will last. So here we are under the eaves of the buildings here. Again, it looks like something like medieval France. Unless you had a blue badge guide, guides wouldn't know about these places either. So, we like to explore our own cities. So let's go up here. And you will see the mixture of the different architecture all together. Oh, I forgot to mention, I was going to mention to my World Peace Tartan fans, there's a whole website for the World Peace Tartan. I'm wearing the World Peace Tartan today. So, hello to my friends at the World Peace Tartan. There is a school in New York, Alexander Fleming School, I believe it is, who actually use this tartan as their school uniform in Manhattan. So you now you've seen the other side of these houses and how you enter at the top and go downstairs. It's all very higgledy-piggledy here. So you've got all this ancient architecture here and then you've got the back of these beautiful Georgian buildings up here. And here we've got the mixture of the modern and the old. And I think it's very sympathetic when you see, see them together. And then you walk through an alleyway and you get a gorgeous view of the buildings all together. Remember and look Mike and I up. I promise we'll take you into little secret places that you would never find on your own. Oh, and we forgot to mention, I have to thank you guys. We got an award. We were awarded, Mike, it's the Green and Sustainability Tourism Award. G, G, G Academy. G Academy. And it's a green microphone. It's a green microphone and it's a European wide um, competition. And we, we're in it, we won it. So thank you very much for your support as well. So we can't do it without yourselves. Um, and again, it's what we do. We liked what we do and we hopefully, you like what we do too. And I do love this new architecture here as well, because it is so socially minded. It's so simpatico, sympathetic to the rest 
of the neighborhood. We are on the other side of the river from the courtyard we were in before, but you will now get a great view. And maybe you're even picking up the bird song. It's hard to believe that we're actually in the heart of a city. We have a river run through it. We've got the birds sing, birds singing. We've got the wonderful red sandstone here of Well Court where we were already. Very well maintained, very well preserved. And here we've got the lovely waters of the Dean River. Dean River, also the Washer of Leith. We use them synonymously.